Coming up tonight, sidelined a police officer now before the disciplinary tribunal after a viral video of him manhandling a high school student. The acting commissioner of police tells us a verdict will be handed down soon. Plus, how does the public feel about a new hospital for New Providence? We took to the streets to find out. Also, a new investment program for climate financing. The Prime Minister is on the international stage explaining how the Bahamas will benefit. And then in our news at 7.30, police have determined the cause of death for Jermaine Miller, the father who died alongside his nearly two-month-old son. We'll tell you what's next for the investigation as our news at 7 starts now. Welcome to our news live at 7. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jamila Mizek filling in for Candino Knowles. The police sergeant involved in that viral video where the officer is seen roughing up a schoolboy is now before the disciplinary tribunal and has been removed from the front line. Acting Police Commissioner Lehman Delavo confirmed as much, telling reporters a small portion of officers go against the law. This police officer sergeant will be placed before the police tribunal today, sometime the day this afternoon, and he will be removed from front line policing until the completion of this matter. I wish to advise the public that 99% of the police officers on the force are hardworking, decent, and honest police officers who go daily beyond the call of duty to serve the Bahamian public. Sadly, less than 1% of our officers from time to time find themselves going against the law. Police tell us the officer in question was not a school resource officer. The incident which was caught on video has sparked public outrage with many criticizing the officer's handling of the youngster. He asked the acting commissioner to respond to concerns that police officers often abuse their authority when dealing with civilians. If a member of the public feels that they, their rights have been violated. There's a complaint and corruption branch. We investigate any such matters, and where there's charges, we brought charges against once we're able to prove it. All right, in some cases, the stand over CID or the one of those stations, and those places are dealt with. So there is a record, there is redress of members of, of the public can go to once they feel that their rights are violated. Meanwhile, police need your help finding three suspects. They say open fire on a man as he was sitting inside his car outside his home. Luckily, no one was injured during the incident that happened around 1 this morning in the Gamble Heights area. Police say the 22-year-old victim was in his 2015 Nissan Note when he was approached by the three gunmen who were dressed in dark clothing and wearing ski masks. The suspects opened fire and left the car filled with bullet holes. Police say the suspects ran from the scene. Now, if you have any information that can help solve the case, contact police at 911, 919 or the Criminal Investigation Department at 502-9991. Just yesterday, Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Michael Darvel said he's looking forward to the construction of a new hospital early in the new year. With a narrowed down list of possible financiers, the proposed dream may soon become a reality. These residents are all singing the same tune when it comes to the idea of a new medical facility. We need it, all right? But if our government would be I'm, I'm uh, honest with their word and do what they say. You know, just don't say things and don't do it. New hospital has been overdue. Governments in the past have been saying, oh, we can build a new hospital, we can do a new hospital. It's overdue. We need it. Well, I think it's long overdue. And it will not centralize, like, oh, to get the hospital now is hectic. Now, according to the Nassau Guardian, a 50-acre plot of land through Papal Tract near the well fields to the east of the road that connects the Saunders Beach Roundabout and the Six-Legged Roundabout has been selected as the building site. Residents also sounding off on the location. It's more like in more closer to the community, to the people. 
the location where they are going to do it right now. You see, and it's right behind social services. You see, so uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be better for me too because uh, five days of the week I'll be close to it because I work right there. The ministry works. The location for people, I'm where it is now. Even though it's a small spot, the area where the hospital is. Bus service is excellent down there for people who don't have transportation. I'm not sure how that would work in the Papal Track area, um, uh, but it's definitely long overdue, and um, we need to do something, and we need to do it fast. It's time now for your first look at temperatures. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is standing by in the Weather Center. Good evening, Greg. Yeah, thanks, Jamil, and a happy Tuesday evening, everybody. We are very warm this evening. Our temperatures in the low to mid 80s right now, but we did get up to the 90s earlier today. A few clouds outside our studios. Your winds are out of the east northeast at 8 miles per hour, and your feels like temperature is at 92. Temperatures around the islands tonight right now, it's 81 in Freeport, 84 in Marsh Harbor, Abaco. We pick up 85s, Alistair, Bimini, and Nichols, San Andres. You guys having some showers nearby. Also in Great Abbey Key, some showers there with 82 degrees. Governor's Harbor, 85. Central Bahamas, 86 is, that's in, well, actually, just Kemp's Bay. 83, Coburn Town, St. Salvador, with some showers there. 85 is in Arthur's Town, Cat Island, and Deadman's Key. Georgetown, Exuma, you guys have 84, and you also have some showers nearby. And then we pick up more 85s in Duncan Town, Ragged Island, Colonel Hill, Cricket Island, Delectable Bay, and in Abraham's Bay. Matthew Town, 86, and our neighbors to the southeast, Turks and Caicos Islands, you guys are currently 86 at this hour. Satellite view, we still have Nigel out there. Nigel is still a potent storm. It's uh, winds increased to 90 miles per hour earlier today and it's continuing on that track. It will continue moving towards the north, eventually turning more towards the northeast as the week goes and then quickly racing off towards the uh, northeast there. Then we have a frontal boundary across the northwest Bahamas that's stationary. Some showers and thunderstorms associated with that boundary will continue to affect the northwest Bahamas. Some moisture still lurking in the central Bahamas, but all in all, a high pressure ridge continues to dominate those portions of the Bahamas throughout the night and into tomorrow. That's your first look at weather. Stick with us to look at your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come in our news, closing the climate finance gap. Prime Minister Davis again making an appeal on the international stage. Our Joshua Williams has the details. And the male farmer of the year speaks exclusively with our news about his journey in the industry. That's coming up when our news returns. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. Don't spend hours. The Prime Minister on the world stage once again, this time participating in a global conference that seeks to combat the world's most pressing issues. He told an international audience the climate financing gap needs to be closed. Our Joshua Williams tells us what he had to say. Prime Minister Philip Davis in New York, participating in the Clinton Global Initiative. The event established by President Bill Clinton in 2005 brings together world leaders to create and implement solutions to world issues such as climate change. In his address, the Prime Minister announcing the organization of a new investment program, which he says will benefit all involved. I'm excited to tell you about the Bahamas Sustainable Investment Program. 
We are going to survive an era of supercharged storms by creating supercharged win-win investment partnerships. With our strategic advisors, Resilience Capital Ventures, we will work with regional and global capital market leaders to underwrite and place an innovative financing facility with a target of initially 500 million US dollars. There are a number of key priorities which the investment fund will focus on. Climate resilient infrastructure, our clean energy transition, coastal zone conservation, reducing biodiversity loss, regenerative agriculture, carbon sequestration, and participation in the natural back carbon credit programs. Since taking office, combating climate change has been at the forefront of the Davis administration's agenda. The Prime Minister reaffirming the country's commitment to being part of the active solution. My government and the people of the Bahamas welcome the partnership with the Clinton Global Initiative on this commitment to action. Reporting for our news. I'm All right, thanks, Josh. Over the weekend, the Ministry of Agriculture hosted the first ever Agrarian Awards, and while there were several nominees, only one could take home the Male Farmer of the Year Award. Today, I spoke to the Managing Director over at Berkshire Bahamas Farms in Grants Bahama, Terence Roberts, about the achievement. Well, at the time, I'm thinking, well, there are other farmers and agriculturalists in the Bahamas who I, I'm inspired by. So when they said that, you know, you made it to the final, I'm like, okay, uh, well, I guess this trip would just be a good exposure. And although the 32-year-old Grant Bahamian started his business just four years ago, Berkshire Bahamas Farms has grown by leaps and bounds. What started off as a farm raising only Berkshire pigs now houses chickens, ducks, and even sheep. Being here in Freeport, Grand Bahama, and to be recognized as the top farmer, male farmer in the Bahamas, um, it was very humbling. Um, like I said, I went there just for the exposure. And I, you know, even sitting down, I'm sitting next to the farmer, Mr. Sidney Sinclair, and there's so much work that I've seen that he's doing in Nassau at Down to Earth Adventure Farm. And, you know, I'm sitting there like, I'm sure he's winning this award. Um, but after some conversation, you know, to me, it's still about the relationships. Despite walking away with the $10,000 grand prize, Robert says what's most important is collaborating for the future of farming in the country. When we look at feeding our country, our community, it's much more than just one farmer um, getting something done. And from we got started in 2019, I realized that a lot of farmers look at each other as competition. But even if all of the farmers, even backyard farms in the Bahamas get together right now to provide a quota for what it is that they have growing, we won't be able to feed one settlement even in Grand Bahama. So we have to create our community of agriculturalists and farmers where we work together to be able to supply a higher demand. And as for his advice? You know, talk to God. God will lead you and direct you where you need to go, but also you need to have mentors. You need to speak with others who are in the industry and, like I said, work together. When our news comes back from the break, we turn our spotlight to stories making headlines across the world as the United States and Iran swap detainees in a major deal. Plus, one of Sudan's historical landmarks now reduced to rubble amid an ongoing war there. And residents from Dominica now forced to deal with load shedding amid a generation shortfall at the local power company. We have the details when our news returns. So Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station, open the app, scan the pump's QR code, select your payment amount, and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. 
We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. This is our news. Welcome back. We turn our attention now to stories making headlines across the world. Iran and the U.S. swapped five detainees each on Monday after Qatar mediated a deal that also saw $6 billion of Tehran's funds unfrozen. But how did this come to be and how did it play out? Lauren Anthony has more. Iran and the United States swapped five detainees each on Monday, thanks to a Doha broker deal between the arch foes. The move also saw $6 billion of Tehran's funds unfrozen. But how did this come to be? What does the deal look like? And what happens next? A Reuters source says the swap was triggered after Qatar confirmed that the frozen funds have been transferred to bank accounts in Doha. Under the deal, five Americans with dual nationality left Tehran for Doha before heading to the U.S. In return, five Iranians held in the U.S. have been released. The detained Iranian-Americans who will be allowed to leave Iran include two businessmen, 51-year-old Siamak Namazi and 59-year-old Imad Shaghi, and 67-year-old environmentalist Murad Tabaz, who also has British nationality. The other two prisoners have not been identified. Iran's mission to the United Nations says the five Iranians to be released by the U.S. are Murdad Moyen Ansari, Reza Sahang Paul Kafrani, Amin Hassanzadeh, Kambiz Atar Kashani, and Kaveh Afrasiabi. The agreement was born out of months of diplomatic contacts, secret talks, and legal maneuvering. Qatar has been at the heart of negotiations throughout, sources and officials say. Since March 2022, Doha has hosted several rounds of indirect clandestine meetings between Tehran and Washington. Early talks focused heavily on Iran's nuclear dispute with the U.S. But over time, shifted to detainees. As negotiators realized nuclear discussions would lead nowhere due to their complexity. In September, Washington waived sanctions to allow the transfer of Iran's funds to Qatari banks. Doha will now take on a monitoring role to ensure Iran's rulers spend the funds on non-sanctioned goods. One of Sudan's main landmarks, the skyscraper that towered over the River Nile and housed the headquarters of a major oil company, has been reduced to a smoldering wreck amid heavy fighting between rival military factions in the capital. Olivia Chan has more. This is one of Sudan's main landmarks in Khartoum. It has now been reduced to a smoldering wreck amid heavy fighting between rival military factions. The Greater Nile Petroleum Operating Company head office, a glass-sided tower topped with a coil of metal, was built during an oil boom before South Sudan declared independence in 2011. It was one of Sudan's most costly constructions. The building is located close to areas fought over by Sudan's army and the paramilitary rapid support forces. Videos released by the RSF on Sunday showed flames and smoke rising from the building in a financial district of the capital. It is unclear what caused the fire that burned through the tower from Saturday. The RSF accused the army of targeting it along with other important buildings, part of an effort to dislodge paramilitary fighters from positions they occupied across the capital early in the conflict. Sudan's foreign ministry, which is aligned with the army, released a statement on Monday accusing the RSF of setting fire to a number of major economic institutions and commercial buildings over the past two days but did not specifically refer to the tower. The war between the army and the RSF broke out in mid-April, when tensions linked to an internationally backed plan for a political transition boiled over, four years after longtime ruler Omar al-Bashir was overthrown during a popular uprising. The conflict has caused widespread clashes, looting and shortages of food and medicine in Khartoum and other cities driving more than 5 million people from their homes. 
Dominica is experiencing electricity problems due to a generation shortfall, which has led to increased load shedding, leaving many consumers frustrated. With the Caribbean experiencing excessive heat, the timing couldn't be worse. During a media conference, General Manager of Dominica's Electricity Services Limited explained they're facing a generation shortfall due to an aging generation fleet. She says over 10 megawatts of generation that is in the diesel section is past due for retirement. Officials say generators will be needed to address the pressing issue. Meanwhile, Guyana's economy will boom again this year as it grows by an expected 38 percent thanks to unparalleled oil sector expansion, according to a forecast from the International Monetary Fund. The international lender predicted crude oil output will expand quickly with three new fields coming online from next year through 2027, following a series of major discoveries in recent years. The outlook for medium-term growth is better than ever, the IMF noted in a statement. The Guyanese economy continues to grow very rapidly, supported by the government's modernization plans, including the unparalleled oil sector inspection. Still to come in our news, today in history, find out interesting facts about the day that was September 19th. Plus, police are still looking into the death of a nearly two-year-old boy as police say his father died from a heart arrhythmia. And then in our news at 7.30, the British High Commission is looking to give scholarships to more Family Island students. That's coming up when our news returns. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. Don't spend hours sending individual messages to your customers. Use SMS messaging instead. With Cable Bahamas Business Solutions SMS Messaging, you can send personalized messages to hundreds or even thousands of recipients instantly. It's quick, effortless, and cost-effective. Plus, it ensures that your messages are delivered directly to your customers' cellular phones, guaranteeing higher engagement. Save time and boost your outreach with SMS bulk messaging. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions at 601-8911 in Nassau or 602-8811 in the Family Islands. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest show. Welcome back to our news. It's now time to turn our spotlight on events that shaped the day that was September 19th. Take a look. On this day in Bahamian history, on September 19, 1927, Jeffrey Adams Johnstone was born in New Providence. Johnstone was a politician, lawyer, church leader, and civil servant. He began attending the Inns of Court School of Law in 1947, and in 1950, he was called to the Bar of England at Middle Temple. Later in the year, he was called to the Bahamas Bar in August. The same month, he joined the law firm of Higgs & Johnson. Two years later, he became a partner in the firm 
and in 1968 he became a senior partner and held this position until his retirement in 1998. His career in politics began in 1962 when he was elected to represent the Eastern District of New Providence in the House of Assembly. He was appointed leader of the opposition and served in that office until July 1971. Johnston passed away on the 4th of August 2017 at the age of 89. Then in 1972, the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas held general elections. 38 seats would be contested by three parties and independent candidates. The political parties that participated in the election were the Progressive Liberal Party, the Free National Movement, and the Commonwealth Labour Party. The PLP won 29 of the 38 contested seats and formed the new government. The FNM won the other nine seats and became the official opposition. Lyndon Pinling would continue as Prime Minister of the Bahamas. Fast forward to 2019, the country held a national prayer service to help heal the scars inflicted by Monster Storm Dorian. We gather united in grief, united in love, and united in service. We gather together to mourn our dead, to pray for the families of those who lost loved ones, to ask for grace and healing for the injured, for those suffering from trauma of body, mind, and spirit. Opposition leader Philip Brave Davis insisted the road ahead will not be easy, but he says it will take a joint effort for the rebuilding efforts. While prayer is essential, I send this call to action. We are God's hands and feet. This is a tragedy of epic proportions, and so many lives have been turned upside down. And in 2022, Queen Elizabeth II was laid to rest. Our news was in London for the somber ceremony. to watch that historical recap again and for all of today's top stories visit rnews.ps that does it for our news at seven joining us now is our italia hall with the latest headlines italia yes jamila thanks an update into the bizarre death of a father and his toddler son and the senate president weighs in on the passage of the protection against violence bill here are your latest headlines an undetermined death, first tonight on our news live at 7.30. Police are still unable to say what led to the death of a 22-month-old boy in a bizarre incident. Plus, hear why the Senate president says amendments will have to be made to the Protection Against Violence Bill. Also, the British High Commissioner calling on family islanders to take advantage of a prestigious scholarship opportunity offered by the UK government. We'll tell you all about it. And later, the orange economy is booming in the country. Hear what a top fashion designer has to say about it when our news live at 7.30 returns. Collect verse access is as easy as grab a collect, scan a collect. Open your camera app, focus on the QR code, and click the link that appears. You own your collect verse experience. Take selfies, join the cultural referendum, and share with your friends. See content from local chefs, Olympic athletes, and cultural icons. Click is proud to be 50. Grab a click, scan a click. Get in the click verse today. Doctors Hospital is reimagined primary care. We have invested to improve our health system, ensuring that accessible, affordable, world-class clinical care is closer to you. Your relationship with a primary care provider shapes the foundation of your overall health. Our new, modern primary care facilities are where critical diagnosis and true personalized treatment begin. With locations across New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Exuma, we invite you to experience the Doctors Hospital difference. Book your next appointment at clinics.doctorshoss.com. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station, open the app, scan the pump's QR code, select your payment amount and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today.
Welcome to our news and thank you for joining us. I'm Natalia Hall. Topping news tonight, exactly after one week, the bizarre incident captured news headlines. Police say they're wrapping up their investigation into the death of 42-year-old Jermaine Miller and his son, Anwar Miller. Now, Chief Superintendent of Police Michael Johnson telling reporters the death of the nearly two-year-old is undetermined. It is known from the pathologist that the death of Lil Anwar Miller was classified as undetermined and the death of Jermaine Miller was classified as cardiac arrh arrhythmia, which means irregular heartbeat. Johnson says the file is being prepared for Her Majesty's coroner. Police say Miller attacked his tenants in the middle of the night and ran from officers when they responded to the scene. Police was asked if drugs were found in the father's system. That was the results of the autopsy. Of course, we have the wait on the toxicology report. Um, that's in the process of being done, and we would be in a position to come back to you and say if that is, was the case. But that's a procedure that was already done. We are waiting those results. Well, a high school student who brought Rice Krispies treats lace with weed to school has avoided jail time by paying a fine. 19-year-old Thomas Graham pleaded guilty to a charge of marijuana possession with intent to supply it when he appeared before Magistrate Samuel McKinney. Police were called to the Doris Johnson High School on September 13 after 27 drug lace treats were found in Graham's bag. The Jamaican national was arrested and charged as a result. He was ordered to pay a $1,500 fine to avoid serving six months behind bars. Graham was also placed on probation for one year. He will be jailed for six months if he's convicted of other offenses while on probation. A wanted Bahamian has been arrested in Georgia. U.S. media say he is a suspect and one of three people to be indicted for the deaths of 17 Haitian migrants and an unborn child. U.S. officials say on August 22nd, Travis Jamal Moss was pulled over for a speeding violation. Officials say Moss identified himself as DeAndre Whitfield, saying he was from the Bahamas and did not have a license. After further investigation, Moss was placed under arrest for several traffic and narcotics violations and had several outstanding warrants from Broward County and Orange County, Florida. According to the report, he was additionally charged with forgery, giving a false name and date of birth to law enforcement and fugitive from justice. There's always room for improvement. That's how Senate President Lachelle Adderley answered when asked about the passage of the Protection Against Violence Bill. The bill passed before Parliament was prorogued, was met with a lot of opposition as many advocates wanted to see the gender-based violence bill before Parliament. This came as police were seeing an increase in domestic violence and crimes against children. Adderley says amendments will have to be made to strengthen the current bill. And so we do have that right and that critical step in the right direction. Now, what does this mean? Does, we, does it mean that we accept this as it is now? No, obviously not. We have to critically evaluate the legislation and then agitate for additional amendments uh, with respect to how we could more empower and protect women, girls, men. There's always room for change. Now, Adelie says everyone needs to continue advocating for the changes they want to see when it comes to protecting people. We cannot wait for perfection. If we wait for perfection, we will never receive that. And so it's always best to get started, to get moving in the right direction. And, and that's exactly what we have done. And so we have to continue as a people, right, to make our people accountable and how do we do that we look at other countries other um, places where they have a very robust um, legislation on the protection of violence and we advocate for that change for those changes all right well we got off to a wet start today with early morning showers and thunderstorms meteorologist greg thompson is in a weather center with a first look at weather greg yeah, thanks, Italian. and a happy Tuesday evening, everybody. We are taking a quick look at outside our studios, temperature-wise, and across the Bahamas, 84 degrees with a few clouds, and we are going to call it warm. Winds out of the east-northeast at 8 miles per hour, and your feels like temperature is at 92. 
Satellite and radar composite, frontal boundary, stationary across the northwest Bahamas with quite a bit of showers and thunderstorm activity affecting those areas. We do have some patchy clouds across the central Bahamas as well, so we're seeing some isolated showers down there. This front is going to hang around for at least the remainder of the week, so we're looking for some showers in the forecast throughout that period, but there's a low-pressure system that's expected to form along this frontal boundary and move towards the north. National Hurricane Center will continue to monitor that over the next several days. That's a quick check on conditions outside our studios and around the islands. Stick with us. A look at the forecast is still to come. Well, to come on our news, looking for a unique scholarship opportunity? While well, the British High Commissioner is urging family islanders to take advantage of the scholarships offered by the UK government. And a local airline is flying high this summer. We'll tell you all about it coming up. Plus, more and more opportunities opening up for those who are part of the orange economy. And that's all coming up when our news returns. Comfort Suites Power. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station, open the app, scan the pump's QR code, select your payment amount, and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fix and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer service that we pride ourselves on. Don't spend hours sending individual messages to your customers. Use SMS messaging instead. With Cable Bahamas Business Solutions SMS Messaging, you can send personalized messages to hundreds or even thousands of recipients instantly. It's quick, effortless, and cost-effective. Plus, it ensures that your messages are delivered directly to your customers' cellular phones, guaranteeing higher engagement. Save time and boost your outreach with SMS bulk messaging. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions at 601-8911 in Nassau or 602-8811 in the Family Islands. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station, open the app, scan the pump's QR code, select your payment amount and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today. British High Commissioner says they're hoping to see more family islanders applying for the Chevening Scholarship, where Bahamians are hoping to get their master's degree at a British university. They can snag a full-ride scholarship. Those applicants, applications rather, are now open. Our Marlena Leonard reports. 
the Chief New Scheme, as people know, is the UK's way of fully funding scholars from around the world to do a master's degree in the UK. It includes tuition fees, flights, stipend, and accommodation. It's fully, fully funded. And every year we have an application window that's open as of today, and uh, students can apply ready for master's degrees in next year. In the past, the Bahamas has only had one Chevening Scholar selected each year, but this year, four young women were selected as this year's cohort. British High Commissioner Thomas Hartley says there will also be four scholarships up for grabs in the upcoming round, and he hopes to see more family islanders in the running for the opportunity. Yeah, we put a big push on last year. We had five times as many applications from the family islands, which is good. I think we can do better. Um, we really do want to increase uh, the, the breadth of Bahamians that are coming. While the process can seem daunting, Hartley says they're working on workshops and creating a buddy system where Chevening alumni help applicants through the process. And while travel to Nassau can often prevent Family Island participation and opportunities, Hartley says a benefit is it all starts by applying online through Chevening.org. It's all website based and so it's exactly the same process and they would go through and um, the same application uh, hoops when it comes to interview. Obviously we would get them here and we would um, interview them. If we had lots of people from, from from, from Grand Bahama, from Eleuthera, we maybe move interviews there, perhaps that would be an exciting thing to do. And that interviewing section of the selection process is what sets Chevening apart. And the primary thing that we're testing on is what's your vision for yourself as a leader? And will you come back into public service and in the Bahamas when you go? And that's a very broad question. It doesn't need to be, you need to be a, a public servant working in a ministry. But how are you going to contribute back to the national development of the Bahamas? That's what we're looking for. Reporting for Our News, I'm Marlena Leonard. All right, thanks for that, Marlena. Well, in just a few days, we will be moving into the fall season as summer comes to an end. And there's been a global travel boom. The local airline has been a part of it. Vice President of Operations at Western Air, Rexy Roll, is giving an overall assessment of business this summer. She says business has been exceptional. I believe that uh, people were anxious after so many years of a particular way of living and, and, and fear. They were excited to get back into travel and what we saw was a lot more uh, a travel just throughout domestically. A lot of people patronizing um, the amazing outer island. Uh and business has been so good that for the month of August, the company added on an additional morning flight just to accommodate the additional volume um, on the Port Lauderdale route. And so, again, we just look forward to adding that Freeport to Port Lauderdale, which is probably our most requested route at this time. And so we look forward to that. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news comes back from the break, the orange economy making significant progress in the country, a top fashion designer is applauding efforts made by government. The National Women's Soccer Team gets ready for international competition and the UB cross country team makes their return. Don't go anywhere, our sports is coming up next. And one or two light showers around the capital today as we approach the end of summer. Greg is back with more weather details when our news continues. Collect verse access is as easy as grab a collect, scan a collect. Open your camera app, focus on the QR code, and click the link that appears. You own your collect verse experience. Take selfies, join the cultural referendum, and share with your friends. See content from local chefs, Olympic athletes, and cultural icons. Click is proud to be 50. Grab a click, scan a click. Get in the click verse today. Doctors Hospital is reimagined primary care. We have invested to improve our health system, ensuring that accessible, affordable, world-class clinical care is closer to you. 
your relationship with a primary care provider shapes the foundation of your overall health. Our new, modern primary care facilities are where critical diagnosis and true personalized treatment begin. With locations across New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Exuma, we invite you to experience the doctor's hospital difference. Book your next appointment at clinics.doctorshoss.com. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station, open the app, scan the pump's QR code, select your payment amount, and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today. and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fix and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. Today's sports update is sponsored by Michelob Ultra, distributed in the Bahamas by Jimmy's Wines and Spirits. This is our news. Welcome back. The women's national soccer team gets set for international play and the UB Mingos return from Florida. Here's Tej Adley with a check on sports. Tej. Thanks, Natalia. Good evening. Welcome to our sports. I'm Tej Adley. The national women's soccer team will begin CONCACAF World Cup qualifying play tomorrow night against Grenada right here in New Providence. Today's announcement marks a new chapter for women's football in the Bahamas, and I am thrilled to be a part of this journey. That's Anya James, president of the Bahamas Football Association. Yesterday, she spoke at a press conference where the national women's soccer team was announced. They're playing in the next round of CONCACAF World Cup qualifying matches. Newly named head coach Rakia Bain was very succinct in her goals for the team. Our dedication and energy resonates with our slogan, we are here, we are ready to win. Goalkeeper Melina McClure is ready to go. We are absolutely just electrified and excited for this opportunity, especially as players. Once again, that's a big match tomorrow at TAR against Grenada. This is the first time they play on the senior level, so it's important that they have a good home crowd to cheer them on. Moving along, the UB cross-country team returned home from Florida. The University of the Bahamas cross-country team recently competed in the Kaiser University meet in Palm Beach, Florida. Fighting through thunderstorm delays, Levine Joseph was the Mingo's best performer in the 5K event, finishing in 17 minutes, 24.82 seconds. Lakeisha Lewis was the best performer for the women, finishing in a time of 23 minutes, 31.85 seconds. It's great to see UB's runners improving. Before we go, John Quell Jones and Liberty up against the Washington Mystics tonight in the WNBA playoffs. That game's going on right now. They have a chance to end the Mystics season with the win tonight. Check out our socials for the results. That'll do it for sports tonight. I'm Tej Adley. 
Still ahead on our news tonight, looking for an opportunity in the orange economy, while well, a top fashion designer may have some advice for you. Only four days left for summer. Are you looking forward to the fall season? Well, Greg is back on what you can expect when our news continues. Stay with us. This is what it In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having Business in a Box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. Don't spend hours sending individual messages to your customers. Use SMS messaging instead. With Cable Bahamas Business Solutions SMS Messaging, you can send personalized messages to hundreds or even thousands of recipients instantly. It's quick, effortless, and cost-effective. Plus, it ensures that your messages are delivered directly to your customers' cellular phones, guaranteeing higher engagement. Save time and boost your outreach with SMS bulk messaging. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions at 601-8911 in Nassau or 602-8811 in the Family Islands. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station, open the app, scan the Pumps QR code, select your payment amount and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having Business in a Box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. Don't spend hours sending individual messages to your customers. Use SMS messaging instead. With Cable Bahamas Business Solutions SMS messaging, you can send personalized messages to hundreds or even thousands of recipients instantly. It's quick, effortless, and cost-effective. Plus, it ensures that your messages are delivered directly to your customers' cellular phones, guaranteeing higher engagement. Save time and boost your outreach with SMS bulk messaging. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions at 601-8911 in Nassau or 602-8811 in the Family Islands. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Welcome back to our news. Will the cloudy skies and rain continue this week? How is it looking in the tropics? While well, Greg is back with your extended forecast, Greg. Thanks again, Natalia. Welcome back, everybody, for our final look at weather. In the tropics, we are still tracking a couple of systems out there. We still have Nigel, which is a potent hurricane, 90 mile power winds moving towards the north. Eventually, we'll make the turn towards the northeast, but in the far eastern Atlantic, we're still watching a broad area of uh, disturbed weather that the National Hurricane Center is giving a medium to high chance for formation, starting to get its act together. A couple of showers and thunderstorms associated with that system it is expected to track towards the uh, west-northwest, so we will continue to monitor this one 
quite closely as it is expected to be headed in our direction. And then, of course, once again, Nigel is sitting out there in the open Atlantic. Not a trouble, not a problem to anybody, but will continue to race off towards the northeast by the uh, remainder of the week and eventually it should become post-tropical. And then across the area, we have a stationary front boundary that's basically generating some showers and thunderstorms. We expect this system to remain in place for the remainder of the week. And there's a low pressure system that's expected to form along that frontal boundary. Nash Hurricane Center giving that a low to medium chance for formation. So we'll continue to watch that. But it will be moving away from us. And of course, that area that I was talking about in the open Atlantic, that's the one that we will continue to monitor over the next couple of days. Boating forecast for the northwest and central Bahamas and Nitro tomorrow. We still have a risk for rip currents along the uh, north and east coast beaches. East to southeast winds, 10 to 15 knots. They will fall light and rebel at times. Seas running 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. High tide will be at 11.22 the night. For the southeast Bahamas, small craft caution. The winds are slightly stronger down there. Also rip current risk. East to southeast winds at 15 knots. Seas running 3 to 5 feet over open waters. Here's a look now at your national forecast. In your extended forecast, we'll keep showers in the forecast throughout the remainder of the week, courtesy of that frontal boundary that's going to be falling stationary across our area. By, by the end of the week, we expect conditions to be improving, and then we do have uh, some showers in the forecast once again early next week. That's a look at our weather. Make it a great night, and stay safe, everybody. All right, thanks, Greg. Well, the orange economy is booming. This year, we've seen those in the industry take part in national events as well as take advantage of grant funding earmarked for creatives. Now, a well-known fashion designer is sharing his story tonight and advice for others. Let's take a look. Most people know me from a Caribbean reality TV show called Mission Cat Park. Um, I did two seasons of that. I did season three and then I did season five, which was All Stars, which I won. Bahamian fashion designer and owner of Rafaelita, David Roll, has been a part of the fashion industry for over a decade. He says the industry keeps him busy and some pieces can take days to complete. But how does he keep his mind sharp to create unique designs for his customers? I'm lucky enough to get my talent from the Lord. I didn't learn this in a school. So he, I think, refreshes my my mind daily and I think um, that's where I lean when it comes to my creative. Roll says as it relates to fashion, he believes the country is at a beautiful point. The current government has done an amazing job when it comes to highlighting Bahamian fashion, especially during the 50th um, anniversary celebrations. When I look at how many Bahamian designers have opportunities now to dress ladies who attend these events and just in general, um, we are being, we're, we're in the spotlight right now and I think it's our moment and you know, I'm, I'm so grateful. And as for other fashion designers coming up in the industry who may be having a difficult time. Sometimes you have to be your own support. Like you, you can't, the world doesn't owe you anything. You have to do it for yourself. The first jacket I ever made was for Brenda Christie for the opening of Parliament. And I just, she didn't know that was the first jacket I was making, but I went for it. Um, I, I taught myself a lot of things. We're lucky enough to have the internet. If you don't know how to do something, go to YouTube, go to the internet and teach yourself how to do it. Um, the world doesn't owe you anything. You have to just go for it. That story again, you can visit rnews.bs. And with that, we thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Natalia Hall. We'll see you tomorrow night. Have a great evening.